Lewis structures or Lewis dot structures are models that chemists use to understand the bonding and the shape and the properties of molecules and polyatomic ions. So let's review some basic skills and assumptions that you'll need to successfully draw Lewis dot structures. One, you need to be able to count valence electrons for an atom. And remember, whatever column an atom is in, that tells you how many valence electrons there are if we skip the D block. Remember that a positive charge means that an electron has been lost. We don't care where it went. Um, we just know it's been lost. And a negative charge means that an electron or electrons have been gained. And we don't care where they came from. Electrons that are used in bonding, or shared electrons, are represented by a line. And each line represents two shared electrons. So in a Lewis dot structure, we'll be drawing a line between two atoms, which are represented by their symbol. And that line represents two shared electrons, which is the covalent bond. Electrons that are not used in bonding are represented by dots. And these are called lone pair electrons and sometimes non-bonding electrons. So the Lewis dot structure is really based on the octet rule, which states that atoms want to achieve eight valence electrons to obtain a stable noble gas configuration. Remember the filled S and P subshell, 2 plus 6 equals 8. Nonmetals can gain electrons to form anions, or they can share electrons in a covalent bond to attain these eight electrons. And we'll be looking at both situations where we form anions and when we're sharing electrons between nonmetals. Now there are a lot of exceptions to the octet rule. First, hydrogen can only accept two electrons. It can never have more than two electrons, so it will only form one bond because it can only take two electrons, and it will always be a single bond. Boron is actually okay with six electrons. It doesn't need eight. It can take eight, but it's okay with six. Beryllium, even though it's an alkaline earth metal, can actually covalently bond, and it is okay with four electrons. Sometimes there's an odd number of electrons, so that can't follow the octet rule. These are known as radicals or sometimes free radicals, and they're very reactive because electrons are more stable when they're paired. Elements in the third row and below can accept more than eight electrons. This is known as an expanded octet and it occurs in the third row or below because in the third shell we have D subshell allowed and the D subshell can accept 10 electrons so we're allowed to have more than 8 because the D subshell allows us more electrons. So let's just go ahead and look at the rules for drawing a Lewis dot structure and we'll look at an example as we go through these rules. The first thing you want to do is sum the valence electrons of the atoms in the molecule or polyatomic ion. So this is a molecule. There's no charge, so that's how we know it's a molecule. It's silicon tetrafluoride. And there's one silicon and one fluorine. And so when I find silicon on the periodic table, one, two, three, four. Silicon has four valence electrons. And when I find fluorine on the periodic table, it's right here in the halogen family, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So each silicon contributes four valence electrons for a total of four. And each fluorine, I have four of them, contributes seven valence electrons for a total of 28. And when I sum those four electrons plus 28 electrons, I get 32. So that's step one. Step two, is identify the central atom. So the single atom is the central atom. And if there are only two atoms, there's no central atom. And those two atoms have to be connected to one another. So it's not a big deal. But if there's more than two atoms, then there has to be a central atom. And the central atom is the atom that there's only one of, the single one. Arrange the outer atoms, every atom except the central atom, around the central atom and then draw a single line between each outer atom and the central atom. And that line is going to represent a covalent bond. So if we look at silicon tetrafluoride, the single atom is silicon. So that's our central atom. 
and I arrange the outer atoms, the four fluorines, around it. And generally, we arrange these 90 degrees from one another. It doesn't matter where you start, but they're going to be 90 degrees from one another. And the single line that I've drawn between my central atom and each of the outer atoms represents a covalent bond. So in step three, we're going to take a look at, at uh, accounting for our electrons. So in step one, I counted 32 electrons. That's what I had to work with. And I drew four bonds. So each bond uses two electrons. So I'm going to subtract eight electrons from my total. Okay, so I have 32. I'm sorry, I have 32. I drew four bonds, so I used eight. So 32 minus eight is 24. I have 24 electrons left. What we want to do with those electrons is distribute these as lone pairs to fulfill the octet rule. All the electrons must be used. And we want to always start with the outer atoms. And if we end up with any extra electrons, they go in the central atom. So I had 24 electrons left. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, fluorine, this fluorine has fulfilled the octet rule because it has eight electrons. Two from the bond and six from the lone pairs. So this fluorine is happy. So I use six, I have 18 more. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, and then now this fluorine is happy. So we can see that each fluorine needed six electrons to fulfill the octet rule because each fluorine has two. I had 24 electrons left and I distributed those 24 electrons as lone pairs on each fluorine. I've used all my electrons and that's what I'm supposed to do. Now every atom except for the exceptions has to fulfill the octet rule and I look as everyone happy. We've already established that the fluorines have eight electrons so they're happy. Does silicon have eight? Two, four, six, eight. Yes, silicon has eight. Since these electrons and the bonds are shared, they will go towards each atom's total. So these two electrons are counted for fluorine, and the two electrons are also counted for silicon. Now, it's not always going to be this easy. Sometimes it will be when you just distribute everything and everyone's happy. But what if you put your extra atoms on the central atom and the central atom has more than eight electrons? As long as the central atom is third row or below, that's okay because of what's known as the expanded octet. If it's not third row or below and it has more than eight, then there's a mistake somewhere. Make, go back and count your electrons and make sure that you've counted and added correctly. What if there's a charge? What if you're looking at a polyatomic ion? We'll go through an example of this in another video, but positive charge, you subtract electrons from the valence electrons. Negative charge, you add electrons to the valence electrons, and then they become part of your total. You place brackets and the charge around the Lewis dot structure once you're done. What should you do if there aren't enough electrons to satisfy the octet rule? Well, remember that hydrogen, beryllium, and borium are satisfied with less than eight, and hydrogen can only take two. So if you've taken that into consideration and you still don't have enough, that means the atoms are going to have to share their electrons even more, which means you're going to have to use multiple bonds. And we'll look at that in a different video.